This is Full Coverage, and I'm Manny Mue. And I am Laura Lee. And this is the show where we're basically covering anything we want to because it's our show and not yours. Thank <laughs> you to Trixie and Katya. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking around. I'm just, I'm totally kidding. But um, for those of you guys who do not know who we are. For all three people out there mm-hmm. who do not know this infamous friendship, <laughs> yes. let us tell you who we are. Mm-hmm. You go first. Okay, <laughs> I am Laura Lee. I am the owner of Laura Lee Los Angeles, a cosmetic company, Nudie Patootie, a um, clothing boutique. I almost forgot what that was. Mm-hmm. I also own a YouTube channel, a TikTok. <laughs> 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 everything everything on earth and i have four cats manny who are you oh my god hey guys i my name is manny gutierrez and i am a latino beauty blogger gay as fuck he is i am also the ceo of lunar beauty and he i also is. have all the social media that laura has as it's well true. and we're just you guys we wanted to kind of create a podcast that we could fully fully F-O-O-L, uh, cover topics that we just kind of wanted to talk about. And, you know, whether it's drama in the space, whether it's, Traditional, you know, pop culture, celebrities, what we're eating for dinner that night. We're telling our fans secrets at the end of every episode. Y- absolutely. And you're giving advice when you guys might potentially need it or just unsolicited advice, of course. It, our segment's called Advice We Shouldn't Be Given. Absolutely. Because we are fools. And that's, guys, that's the whole point of the podcast is because we're fools and we're just having fun with it and we're best friends and we just kind of want to be here and have fun and just kind of shoot the shit from a place of love. And that's that. And today's episode is going to be a conversation on cancellation. Is it growing? Is it getting worse? Is it getting more serious? Where is canceling going? Cancel culture. It Can- is a, a thing. I'm going to get you a necklace that says cancel culture. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'll get you earrings that cancel Thank on Thank you so it. much. Make sure they match. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just go ahead and start off with our first segment. And so we feel like we don't but do have enough experience to help people and answer their questions that they need advice from. Exactly. It is up to your discretion to take our advice. <laughs> but we will be giving it unsolicited. We will do the best we can, unsolicited advice. <laughs> yes. So... Okay, Laura, pull it up. Pull up right, the first right, advice segment ask. we have. So this is our very first <sighs> I'm scared. piece of advice we're going to give out. Oh, my God. Look at us. I know. Episode I'm a one. Nervous. Wow. Changing lives every day. <laughs> yes. That's what we should have called this podcast. Changing, changing lives. lives. <laughs> wow. <laughs> For the worst. I'm just kidding. Okay, here we go. I like my childhood best friend, and I don't know how to tell him, and I don't want to ruin it. Ooh. Oh my gosh. That's the dude, that's so hard. That situation. I agree, actually. I think it is a difficult situation because it could definitely potentially mess up the friendship if you do bring into the the like equation in. I need to know some more. So have you show have you like given some signs that you like him? Here's the thing. What if she has? Let's say hypothetically oh okay. she so has let's say she has, okay. Given like a little flirtatious. Uh huh. A little flirtation vibe, a little flirtation energy. Yes. How does that, like, we have to see, like, how he receives it, too. Is he receiving it in a way of, like, oh, we're just friends, like, ha, 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 you're, like, my sister? Or is it kind of, like, playful, like, oh, my God, yeah. Like, I, so it kind of like, depends. I'm into it. If he's yeah. shown any sign that he's into it, I might would just go for it. Same. Right? Honestly, I think I would, too. I think that if he's giving you that kind of, you know, fantasy of, like, kind of playing around flirting with you back, I think that's definitely a good sign. I do, too. Even if he's not, I just personally think that life is so short, Mm -hmm. and it's like, go for it. At the end of the day, just go for it. Because the thing is, if that would really wreck a friendship since childhood and just obliterate it, then how strong was the friendship to begin with? And worst case scenario, let's say, okay, yeah, I told him I like him. He didn't receive it. Well, maybe after a month, you guys can go back to being friends and you can find a hot dude to date that's not him. Exactly. (laughs) No, but I think that's correct. I feel like with me, I when I was in my earlier 20s, I was a lot more outgoing when it came to um, telling people I'm into them. I would literally walk into a club and be like, hey, I think you're hot. We should make out. And like literally we would. Would you do that now? No. I know you wouldn't. That's me. I'm like, Manny thinks you're hot. Will you make out with my friend? She does do that. She really does. We'll be out of the club. She's like, hey, he thinks you're hot. And I'm like, Laura, stop. I am doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Crack her neck. Um, but I feel like, you know, you you have to, you never make the, sh- the shots you don't shoot. Yes. That's like You'll totally miss the same, all right? every shot you didn't You don't shoot. take. You don't. What is it? You <laughs> No. It's something like you miss all the shots you don't take. That's it. You miss all the shots you don't take. So I think that yes. at least putting it out there, trying to, you know, 
do it, I think is like really, really, really commendable because I do too. you just kind of never know with those kind of friendships, especially when you're friends in the beginning. Like that's like a love story. It could, it, it could be, it could be a literal love story where it's like a fantasy where you started off friends, the friendship turned into something more and it like became something. Wow. Have you ever told a, like a friend that you liked him or her? I have when I, I was like, like you in, have. Like, I feel like you've told I, me. I you definitely, have. definitely have. Where it was like a friendship that turned into a little bit more, but then it ends up like kind of not staying on that route for me, and it just became we just became friends. It's hard. It's, I think it's different in the yeah. gay world a little yeah, bit. Yeah, totally. I think it's a little bit of a different situation, but it was for me. I think that if I have a friend mm-hmm. who I'm attracted to and they're single, I can't have that friend. What's the point? What is the fucking point? And I have been with you on this journey, and I agree with you, like, 100%. Because, like, I get it. I wanted you and Daniel Prada to, like, oh my have a moment. God. Joey Grissom is going <laughs> <laughs> He's going to fucking choke me. <laughs> choke me. No, but uh, that's funny because it's not just you who said that. For, I want happiness for Joey, and I want just as totally. much happiness for Daniel. I want happiness for both of them. Mm-hmm. But I would like to see that moment. Briefly, oh my. Laura is fully convinced that Daniel and I are gonna get married and have kids. We've already told each They're other at 35. Like the most pretty people <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Like they are the most beautiful people, and I'm just like sitting Inside back and out, watching, right? mostly on the outside. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding, both. But I have been sitting back watching these two people mm-hmm. not fall in love, and it disgusts oh, me. Laura, you can't just say that. <laughs> This bitch is crazy. <laughs> um, no, literally, no. I I get it because it's funny because I actually get DMs all the time about people being like, "Would you ever be with Daniel?" Yeah, and I'm like, "Well, we're just friends. Like we we met each other when we were friends, totally. and it's been friends ever since. ever since. We never explored anything like that." Didn't you used to think Joey was like hot? Of too? course, yeah. I thought he was. I, I mean, mean I Joey think they is both hot. are gorgeous. I mean, why is everyone so pretty? I, it makes me sick. But well, the thing is, like, I, you know, but, like, because they were together, mm-hmm. I I closed that chapter totally. so quickly because totally. I'm not going to be disrespectful, obviously, and be mm-hmm. like, oh, that's, like, their thing. That's their life. They're together. I'm not in that. But, again, like, if – going back to the advice. This isn't about me, Laura Lee. We can make it that this way. This isn't about <laughs> me. Going back to the advice. <laughs> this episode never... is on Manny's dating life and that only. We got him, And that guys. only the entire – <laughs> <sighs> Y'all make me sick. Um, but I feel like it's really, really important to, again, shoot the shots and see. Mm-hmm. And if not, like, I think that if the relationship is strong enough, mm-hmm. it'll make it through anything. Absolutely. Truly. If it's a Even childhood if, friend, like, come on. Even if you guys get weird for a few weeks, it'll go back. Especially once you find someone else that you think is hot. Men are a dime a dozen. <laughs> they honestly they are. are. <laughs> Baby, they are. Baby, the, the sea, it is vast. It is vast. It is lush. It is. There's so many it's things. Full. There's dolphins. There's shamus. There's, you'll find what there's you're so act- much. If you're looking, you'll find what you're looking for. Always. You always, always find, find what you what seek. Look- you'll find what you seek. Mm-hmm. Even if it's good or bad. If it's bad, you, fi- you find you the bad. find the bad. find what you seek. Look at you, <sighs> self-help book. You know, ah. it's the... Or I'm not giving a fuck. <laughs> that's, Honestly. That's, that's you. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's you. That's, She's, she, Laura is actually a big self-help reader. You should see my bookshelf. It's, it's like, is this self-help. girl need, need something? <laughs> but I just enjoy it. I, I enjoy self-improvement. Totally. And actually it's funny because Laura always like kind of gives me little tidbits from it. I and I feel like her improvement seeps into me. It does. And it makes me better. I'm, well, your positivity makes me better. Aww. It does. Because sometimes I want to be negative. I mean, he's like, <laughs> we should look at it from this angle. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Just agree with me, you motherfucker. <laughs> Literally. No, it's true, you guys. I'm very big on playing devil's advocate and yes. kind of seeing a, something from a bigger picture from a bird's eye. He's taught down. me to do that, though. And I will say I didn't really do that as much before. And now I do that so much and even when I don't want to I'm like let's be honest with this situation though be 100%. honest you know and 100%. like play that game where you're like looking at it from another perspective and we were literally just doing that earlier this morning we're not we gonna were. talk about what it was but we were <laughs> but we were doing that earlier today mm-hmm. and I was like well think of it this way maybe this is how they meant it da 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 and it and then further information developed and you were like never mind <laughs> <laughs> never mind Mo, you're right <laughs> or you're right fuck a board a board a board there we go, bitch. Go, go, go. Happens sometimes too. It happens. It, honestly, it totally happens. Mm-hmm. But um, no, it's crazy. I just feel like you have to just try. You have mm-hmm. to try in life just in general. And you got to put yourself out there because things don't happen unless you try. Agreed. And so for you, you know, out there listening for advice, we say give it a shot. Give it. Give it, hit it with your best shot. Hey, we're gonna get copyrighted. <laughs> that singing <laughs> was so iconic. It was so good. We're gonna get copyrighted. 
by strike. My goodness, I have to be careful Ooh, on this mic. It's like a cat crying over here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, guys, so we actually have, so with the podcast, what we want to do with the podcast, we want to do like a segment in the beginning, advice, whether it might be advice, whatever it might be. And then we kind of want to go into our main topic for this show. Exactly. And today's main topic that we're going to talk about. Is cancellation. Oh. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. We need a Q and a. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we're probably going to need that sound a lot for this. But listen, we've been canceled. Baby. At this rate, everybody's going to be canceled. And then By what do you 2023. do? 2023. <laughs> everyone will have been canceled. What do you do when you cancel everyone? I don't know where we I, go from there. I don't know. But we've been, we've, so like you guys, even like, this is just like a, uh, for the podcast in the future. So Laura and I, obviously we have been canceled in the past. 2018 was a hard year for us, but we came out on the other end and Absolutely. we feel like we came out so much better for it. Um, and I think that. For us, like this podcast isn't about like just, you know, talking like about like crap or tea or anything like that. It's about giving advice potentially to people from someone from two someone who have been through being canceled mm -hmm. or just been through hard times online. And we've been doing it for so long, seven years, eight years. Um, and we're trying to be the most authentic uh, so we can be and just give advice where we can and just kind of talk about subjects where we wouldn't really usually talk about it on our socials. Yeah, we, we just want it to be more of a conversation between mm -hmm. us and our listeners. And yeah, just lighthearted, but at the same time discussing big topics. Yeah. And I think that, you know, coming from like we're it's always coming from a loving place. Mm -hmm. We're always trying to better ourselves and better others and want the best for everyone. Right. So we're not over here just like trashing on people, talking about no situations, way. never doing that. We just want to kind of elaborate on certain things, especially coming from two influencers in the space. Because we'll obviously talk about influencer stuff going on, pop culture, et cetera. Yes. Going in the future. But, you know, I think it's important because we have been through the, the thick of heart, it, the thick of it into the thick of it. Into the thick that of it. That literally was we 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 were drama again in one. We pioneered <laughs> beauty guru drama. We pioneered beauty and guru drama. And I'll say drama. this: shit's not fun. No, 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 no. It is probably the worst. <laughs> we thing. crawled so they can run with drama now. Ooh, it's the <laughs> worst thing we ever been through. And honestly, you guys, maybe in the future we'll talk about it in an episode where we actually like dissect what actually happened from us in our podcast, right? But our podcast <laughs> and our cancellation. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> But today we specifically want to address and kind of talk about how we've noticed cancellation, canceling has gotten worse and seems to get bigger and bigger and bigger. More and intense. Like, where is that going? I, I like it's kind of crazy to think that like in the beginning. So when we got canceled in 2018, mm -hmm. um, you know, the situations were shitty, obviously, of course. But it seems like now people are getting canceled for like crimes. Yeah. And it's like seems like ever yeah. it like, gets worse and worse and worse. And it's like more and more things come up about different people and it's like girl you can't keep like hiding yeah certain things about yourself if it's like it's gonna it's always gonna come up if it's criminal activity if it's criminal activity maybe it's gonna it's gonna come up but it's crazy how like i feel like it almost starts off as like like back in the day it was like mundane drama like oh he said she said we've been in drama yeah that were so that was so dumb dumb i'm sorry i'm saying it's dumb i'm gonna talk about specifically one because we're on a podcast and we're talking do it let's bring up and rehash no. The Morphe <laughs> shopping slash Laura Lee has a long receipt in her hand. So yes. she is trying to lie and elude that she has spent hundreds of dollars mm. on makeup when it was given for free. Yep. And that became a thing. Oh, it was, we were both it was there a moment. Together. And looking back, I'm like, I'm still like, are you kidding me? Like, it's just weird. Like, because we were literally doing a giveaway for our we followers. Went, Linda invited us to come to Morphe and yes. get a bunch of stuff. Here's the kicker. We already had everything Maybe. Morphe <laughs> sold. So we really didn't need anything. Uh -huh. But Linda was like, do a giveaway. Give it to your friend's family. Yeah. And so Manny and me were like, we want to go to the store anyways. want to say hey to Linda. We want to support. We're affiliates of the store. Yes. Let's go. Let's get a crap ton of stuff if they're going to give it to us anyways. And right. do these two huge giveaways mm -hmm. for our YouTube channels. We're acting a fool the entire time in the store, naturally. Now, of course, we're just being dumb fool coverage. Hello. Full, literally, we're acting like this is fools. a great this interpretation is of our face the entire yeah. time. Yeah, just being dumb. And like, we're just having just letting fun. letting us fill our baskets full. And again, we're putting together two huge Morphe, extremely relevant in the beauty world. Yes. Space brand Especially products. Especially four or five years ago. Yeah, like super, super. Uh -huh. Like one of the most relevant brands. So what an exciting opportunity. So we load up our baskets, and so they're just checking us out simply to take the inventory out of the store. And of while course. they're doing it, this long receipt so is printing. Long. And so, feet. 
Several feet. feet. Oh, it was like ridiculous. Yeah. I think it's funny. Totally. To kill a tree. (laughs) No, No, but seriously, it was like the longest receipt like I've ever seen because it was not only my stuff, it was Laura's stuff too, all in one receipt. So imagine how, it was like literally like seven feet long and we're just being dumb. We're like running within the store because it was so, it was like a, it was like a ribbon. We're We're Snapchatting it. This was before IG story. We're Snapchatting the receipt. We're posting the receipt. We're literally running through the store like we're ribbon dancers. Uh Uh-huh. We made a moment out of the receipt, which then turned to they're deceitful liars. Because it was like it would show like oh zero. It yeah. would show like that we zero. didn't pay People for it. People were like zoom in on the receipt. It says zero. We caught them. You guys. <laughs> Okay. This is like this is dead ass. This was a situation, and it was talked like about on drama situation. channels. A full. It was a full situation. thing where it's like I can't believe how deceptive they are. They're liars. liars. Like they're, they're getting all this for free, but they have a receipt and they're showing it off. And it's like we never said that we were buying. But these I never products. said. Wow, guys, I spent. Five hundred dollars exactly. on Morphe stuff for you guys for the giveaway. I never said it that. wasn't even for us, dude. That is the thing. Ugh. It was for us. It was like idiots. I want to punch I myself. Know. I literally just want to knock myself out. Literally, just because it makes you want to rip your hair out of totally. your head and just. And the thing is, like, when you start to talk about it, and you're like, "Oh my god, you guys, this is what we meant. This is the situation." People start to pick that apart too. Oh yeah. So it becomes like, a, "Okay, no well, what do we do?" There's no mercy in canceling someone. So no. whenever you're just trying to simply be like, guys. It was for a giveaway. I can go in my drawers and show you I already have all this stuff. Right. No, absolutely not. Then you're a liar. I mean, then became yeah, then it became like we're lying and you're a super we're liar. being decept- deceptful and deceitful. Um and it was just like such a weird situation, but like that's like we're just kind of showing this as an example of drama that happened back in the day that was so like just he said she said like kind of just dumb. Silly. It's silly it's drama. Silly. It's not really anything serious. But as times have progressed, oh my God, the times ma'am, have turned. The times have turned. The, the tides, tides. I think it was supposed to be the tides. The tides, tides, the tides, the tides are turning. We're learning our sayings, and we will continue that conversation. We're going to take a quick little back. break. Yes, we will continue right after this. Mwah. And we are back, and the brows are. <laughs> no, Don't kidding. you bring so, that ha- here? It's like it just—it was—it was building. I had to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you guys, you know, so we're just kind of—we're kind of want to do like a little mini baby history lesson. Yeah, let's let's breeze through let's some breeze. of the past dramas. Let's just a light drama Geddens. Drama Geddens specifically. Lightly, God, there's been so many like all so- together in the internet outside of the beauty community. We'd be here all day. Oh, also, by the way, shout out to here for the T for coining drama getting the term. Um, and for giving us all the information we know. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. without her, we would have no idea. We would be idea. blind. We'd be going in blind. So shout out to Sam. We would know. We wouldn't know what's going on. But um, okay, guys. So obviously, 2018 was with us. Yes. That was the that was like the really the kicker. I feel like we that started kicked it off. off. The, uh, we kicked it off, and then yeah. it and then it moved on down into 2019. 2019, where we ran into drama getting two two, and that was with Tati. Uh-huh. James and it was like a the bi sister scandal. That was the bi sister, and then we cruised right on from that uh-huh. into 2020 with Drama uh-huh. Get in Three, which involved a lot of the same people, the same people, and then and it continued. It just continues. So and it snowballed. It snowballed, and it got. I feel like it got bigger and bigger every time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it doesn't matter how irrelevant I'm talking about myself, how irrelevant <laughs> I am, or how much I honestly truly don't acknowledge it or pay attention to it. You knew about it because of how big it got. Oh, dude, I feel like with when it came to Drama Geddens, like, let's say two, it became, like, picked up by the New York Post. It was picked up by, like, every news outlet possible. And it was about YouTuber drama. And it became, like, this, like, thing where traditional media started talking about social media drama. Yeah. And that happened in Drama Get number two. Yeah. Because it got so big. Like, yeah. talking four or five million views big. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ma'am. Ma'am. It got huge. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it seems like the dramas as they continue get bigger and bigger. And it seems to get a little more dark. It does. And darker. And it darker. does. I mean, you have dramas now with Austin McBroom, David Dobrik. Right, right. And like these are becoming some pretty major allegations. Yeah. No, see, now we're getting into the allegation world when it comes to people, you know, talking about how like these people have made this situ- cer- certain situations happen and they become so big. And it's like, I'm. I'm glad that 
people are starting to hear people out. Yeah. And I feel like this wouldn't have happened, let's say, 10 years ago. Right. I just don't think it would have happened. I feel like people are actually starting oh, to yeah. listen to people nowadays and be like, hey, this happened to me. And people are actually listening to what's going on and believing. It seemed like before, just <clears throat> thinking about it as we're speaking now, it seemed like before, if you had a big enough audience, you couldn't be canceled because no one could really take you down because, I mean, that's what canceling is, to take someone down. Let's not... At, like it's not right you know what i mean and, and the, it seemed like that protected you and you could it and now it seems it's quite the opposite the bigger the audience you have the higher chance you have of that happening totally i feel like it has a lot to do with the fact that depending on you know relevancy mm -hmm. and how many people are talking about you and you know i think it has a lot to do with the fact that the situations happening nowadays are just so much more severe than i still think are there are the silly ones that happen i mean right. i feel like a tiktoker gets Oh, every day. Literally Baby, every, every day. Single day. Or it's like or it's like the people are consumed with like the relationships with people. Yes. And oh. that's kind of what it becomes. It's kind of like, oh, well, I'm I'm team this person. And so therefore I'm going to cancel the other person, even though it's like you don't really know the ins and outs of their relationship. You have to be able to be like, girl. Right. And it's like, I don't know. With, with situations like that, it's like this is just for other people's uh, someone else's torture is for someone else's entertainment and I don't love it and I know this has gone on and on for years where the mm. media is like why don't they ever talk about when YouTubers do something good because YouTubers do good stuff all the time as does the traditional world and celebrities do good stuff all the time but the media is nowhere to be found it's oh, and it's always like the media always tends to do these like clickbaity titles of things that never even happened yes but they clickbait it with that to be like oh well can you believe this person said this and it's like that never even actually happened i feel like the press world's such a tricky world it is there's technically no su no such thing as bad press but it's also like who is keeping press accountable for things no one no, no one. one no one keeps literally the media accountable. no one they it, can do whatever the fuck they want it's it the people that keep them accountable is that it's the viewership rate and the yeah. people love it I mean, I mean, your story is not going to sell based off a YouTuber doing something good. No one wants to hear it. Your story is not going to sell. It's got to be talking about something juicy. It's. I mean, honestly, that's how I feel it is. How it's become. It's become a little bit more drama centric Ooh. as things have become farther and farther and farther it's into the social like media world. Something that has become addictive. Like, yeah because even me like sometimes i'll get wrapped into it i'm not gonna lie yeah like i'll see like a story and i'll be like hmm what actually like went down what actually happened right and i'll be a little bit like kind of like but this is what searching sucks. you'll never know what actually happened because no. i've watched several videos talking about our drama from 2018 even recent ones and there are literally so many facts that are not kind of wrong they are dead wrong yeah. half of them I was talking about you this other day. I'm like, that never happened. This never happened. But people mm -hmm. say it so confidently, which alludes to believe, well, truth. she must be telling the truth because they believe it happened. How would they know? Well, that, I think that's that I guess on uh, is on us in a way because we've never talked about it in like more of a deep dive. But like, it's also our real life. Yeah. Like it's our life. Like we are able to have things that are private and things that need to be, you know, under wraps. And it's right. like, that's not, we. it doesn't have to be, out all the time right like you don't need to like scream from the rooftops like hey like i'm ending this friendship with this person hey ha, ha. like it sucks and x y and z is why but if you don't then it's like then it all like the a, assumptions oh, roll in and it? the assumptions are real until you know until they're proven not yeah exactly. but it just sucks like that it becomes a catalyst it becomes a snowball effect and it becomes like a almost this herd mentality of like oh well this is the truth so we're all gonna go with it Oh, absolutely. And it's like, girl, but that's not what the truth but is. But at that point, it doesn't matter if the truth comes out because we have a herd mentality mm -hmm. and we already chose what we would like to believe. And Remember, you know that's like a lot of what maybe, goes it's on the truth. I mean, didn't I, how, how haven't I told you about this thing of people don't want to believe the truth. They want to believe their perception is some, of something is true. This is the self-help in you coming out. This is exactly what I'm Manny has these moments when he tells me things and I'm like, <laughs> yes. Okay, wait, <laughs> say it again. I need to fully take it in. <clears throat> people don't want to believe the truth. They want to believe their perception is true. Oh my gosh. That's and it's such like truth. a strong quote though. Thank you. It really is. I heard it like a while ago and I was like, it was so profound to me, especially when I dealt with 2018 or we mm -hmm. dealt with it 2018. I was like, people, even if the truth came out of whatever happened, happened, people would still want to believe what they want to believe because that was the narrative that that's in their mind. Well, then someone would have to go against themselves and say, well, maybe I was wrong. And, oh, dude. Oh, Lord. Yes. Yes. I was right? like, am I a bad friend? Like, yeah. cause, you know, then yeah. you start to like think of like the craziest things and you're like, oh, my gosh, like, wait, maybe I I'm terrible. Be yeah, I, I can't, can't be wrong. Yeah, I can't be wrong about this. I have to be right. So then I can't believe what they're saying, even though we both know it's the truth. Right. 
Mm-hmm. It's crazy, honestly. It's just kind of like wild to see like how where it's like kind of going and flowing and you just almost like never really know what like the next thing is going to be. Right. And you kind of, you're just like, a, you're trying to be aware of everything, but you don't want to be too involved either. Cause you're like, okay, I want to live my life happily. I don't want to be involved in the drama. Oh, yeah. I just want to like be on my course and stay happy and do my own thing. I am the queen of minding my own business. You really are. And even and many times when people try to drag me into mm-hmm. something, good luck. Because the thing is, I will mind my own business for the rest of my life. I learned that hard, hard lesson, mm-hmm. you know, a few years, years ago. ago. Uh-huh. And my life has never been more peaceful mm-hmm. since I do mind my own business. Same. And I honestly, right. it's so funny because I feel like we just kind of stick to each other. Yeah. <laughs> like glue. And it's like, right. it's, it's kind of been like that for the last several years. And I think it just, when you involve more people into your life, mm-hmm. there's always things that kind of ar- like that come totally. from that. Like you can't just expect to be friends with a hundred people and not have beef or issues and situations with someone. Right. You can't. Like right. you almost like I feel like my even my own personal friend group has gotten smaller but it's gotten stronger. Exactly. It's like instead of having ten, you have five that are really, really strong. And it's like I would rather have the nickel than the dime in that right. situation. Oh gosh, me too. And likewise we have the same friends group. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but it's like we're it's it's strong. Because it it's like it's about our personal connection. It's not about the social media aspect of friendship. Right. That's like a huge, huge part of it too is I feel like it's so important to facilitate friendships in real life. Mm-hmm. And it, sometimes they'll read on social media, that's fine, whatever it might be. But like, it's not about like, let me just show that I'm hanging out with pe- these people all the time because like, that's just like what it's supposed to be. I feel like I, I would do that back in the day, like four, totally. three, four years ago. I, I was agree. Like, me too. I was like, do I have to show that we're hanging out with each other because like that's what social media wants to see? I all felt hanging pressured. Out. Me too. I felt so much pressure from social media to show every single time I was hanging out with a friends group because mm-hmm. if I didn't, I felt like social media was going to rain down on me so hard that where's she at? They're not friends. Uh-huh. Let's start a thing of this. And then again, there's no really defense. And it's kind of crazy. You know what's crazy to me is that back in the day that was a thing and I feel like that's not a thing anymore. Well, if it is, I don't really give a shit. Like, same, no, I'm same. like, y'all are going to have to make assumptions about me. Totally. You guys are going to have to group. say I'm not friends with people. <laughs> yeah. I had someone DM me the other day and they said, they said along, along the lines of like, you and Manny don't have a real re- friendship, but a working friendship. And I was like, wow, I didn't even respond to right. it because I'm like, I'm secure in my friendship with Manny. Mm-hmm. and. We hang out so many times we never post. Mm-hmm. Like people have no idea when we're hanging out and when we are and when we aren't because we don't post it. Well, it's crazy because we actually have a real friendship first exactly. and the working relationship like just comes with the territory. But mm-hmm. we have a real friendship and that's like we're genuinely best friends and it just kind of like flows into us even doing this podcast is like, cool, we are able to, you know, have a real life friendship shown in a different capacity Right. And I feel like though before, I know I know a lot more now than I knew then, but I feel like the past me back in 16, 17, 18, all those years coming up on social media, I would have read that DM and said, oh my God, panic. You're right. Got to flash Manny every single time I'm with him and show that we're just having a good time. But now I'm like, that's your assumption mm-hmm. and I'm secure where I'm at. I don't care. <laughs> that's her perception. Yeah, that's your perception of the truth. Perce- yeah. It's the truth though. Like It's like that's... If that's what you feel like it is, then you can feel it all you want. Mm-hmm. You know, what people say about me is none of my business. It's true. RuPaul says that. Um, you know, and I think it's like the most true saying is like what you have to say or what you think of me has nothing to do with me at it's this true. point. It's like I, I, I can only be me, mm-hmm. present myself the way I want to be presented. And mm-hmm. I obviously will hope that people will perceive that the way I want to be perceived. But if you don't, then you don't. Right. And that's like okay but i feel like that kind of drama see like that was the drama back then it was like oh i have to show all my friends da, da, da. now the drama is like oh my god <laughs> oh my gosh like there's like allegations against someone like legally and there's like so many more things happening that's why i just feel like the drama back then was so soft yeah in a way yeah and it's become so much like an avalanche it's just gotten harder and more intense and more intense and it's just like I don't even know. Like sometimes I'm like, okay, girl, go back to the old drama because that <laughs> shit, like is like it's light. Yeah. You know, sometimes the drama nowadays it's so heavy. Right. And I'm like, I can't. You know, there were moments which I won't say this isn't heavy drama, but like for instance, Chrissy Teigen, whenever she uh, uh-huh. got wrapped up in making really rude, insensitive. I can't Those remember DMs. the it was DMs. Like telling that, but girl I can't remember. To, okay, she said know, some pretty nasty horrible things. things. Horrible, horrible things. Horrible things. Um. Not good, but I feel like the drama for that, like you would have thought she might have murdered someone. 
Mm-hmm. Like I it was, became... I was like, oh my god. But no, I'm not condoning what she did. I think what she did is terrible, mm-hmm. very bully, bullyish like totally. behavior. Um, could have caused someone self harm. Not good. Totally. But at the same time, it's like the drama that transpired from that was about as big as Monica Lewinsky and Bill. Right. Like it just it escalated. And the thing is, because she's an actual like celebrity. I feel like, like it she's used to not celebrity. be that bad though. You know what I'm saying? Totally, totally. It wouldn't build like that. But I think mm-hmm. now people have already kind of seen their own power yeah. in a way. And they can kind of see like, oh, like if we do this and like this person can, you know, lose so much because like we have the power and we have the say. We can take away. We can take away. Mm-hmm. And I think people can see that nowadays and it's become so much more like a a game. Is it interesting in power a way? that people want though? Totally. But once you've been, can- and I say people because I don't want that power because once you've been canceled, you won't want that power or to use it either. You're like, baby, I'm good. Girl, leave because me you, out. Because when you're on the other leave end of it. me out. There's, there's, the, the thing is cancel culture is, it's horrible because cancel culture really essentially is about people thinking that you can never be forgiven for something that you've done wrong. And account, and like uh, cancel culture doesn't, uh, it doesn't like allow for. You know, forgiveness. I don't think and it allows moving forward. for truths to come out either. Totally, because they want their thing to be said. Exactly, they want what they believe to be mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. So once you're canceled for what you're canceled for, there can be no truths, uh, no mercy, uh huh, no forgiveness. Same thing as no mercy. Totally. Um, and so those are just things that I and Manny don't stand for. So it's hard for us to stand for cancel culture. There's always a better way to go about it. Well, I think that the whole idea of accountability culture is Mm -hmm. great. And Mm -hmm. I think that that is something that's very, very important. I think that there's a big difference between canceling someone and trying to end their entire careers. Right. um, Whereas like keep holding someone accountable for something. And once you've seen growth and, you know, you've seen like progress in a human being, like allow them to move forward. Exactly. And allow them to, live their most authentic self, you know? And I feel like even for us, like I feel like we, you know, we're canceled since 18 and it was hard for us. We left, we did everything. We worked on ourselves. We worked on our own personal lives. And I think that people can see that nowadays. And I think that they're like, oh shit. Like it's good that we almost let them do their own thing. Yeah. Because it's like, look, we we came out on the other end and we feel like we've been stronger and we, we are trying. Yeah. We're trying to make amends and we're trying to make, better decisions like constantly I feel like, uh, my main goal and i believe as for you was we really need to acknowledge different areas where we are wrong and mm-hmm. we did go wrong and totally. we were in the wrong and we need to work on ourselves and i think that's what we've spent the past three years doing i do think a lot of it shows and i do mm-hmm. think some people don't care and that's okay too they don't have to and they're not forced to but um I just appreciate the fact that we both like didn't look at the situation so much. Once we got through it, we weren't so much as victims. We realized we were in the wrong for mm-hmm. a lot of it. We acknowledged that, and then we took it upon ourselves to work on ourselves and move forward and move and forward with with that new version of ourselves that we liked and enjoyed and saw that there was that was there. Yeah, and I think that you have to allow for people to do that. And yeah. I just think that council culture doesn't just allow doesn't. for that. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It doesn't. And mm-hmm. it took us three years to get to who we are. Yeah. And people still don't like us sometimes. Part of me, and this you know? may be silly to say, but I feel like there were more kids online than there ever was before. Right, right, Like right. when I was, I'm like, back in my day. But when yeah. I was growing up, I didn't get a cell phone until I was 16. And now three-year-olds have cell phones. Totally. So it's like you have a lot more of a youthful energy, a very online energy mm-hmm. um, online now. So... I do think a lot of the aggression does come from a younger audience, but I see just as many adults acting a fool. Acting a fool oh coverage. Oh, Lord. <laughs> acting a fool coverage. coverage. Um, it, cause it, hap- it really does happen. It's it doesn't. It's not just one person, not one age group. It happens to everyone. And I think that, you know, when it comes to online hate in general, it becomes like a, what, what are you hating for exactly? Like, mm-hmm. in what way does it affect you? Mm-hmm. Like so heavily, where you have to uh, be behind a screen typing and you know saying something absolutely horrible, encouraging something... people to yes. kill themselves, yes. to hurt themselves, encouraging people you know not to be here anymore. Like, how did it affect you in the way that person shouldn't exist anymore? I think a lot of it has to do with projection, yeah. and I think a lot of the people that tend to do that are devastated in their own way, in their own life, right? With something, let's say it, it might be something. Let's 
you know, a lot of people like to detach from their own reality and like focus on something else because sometimes their reality isn't that great. You know what? And and being online and like seeing that happen from the outside in, I've caught myself do it, whether you're watching a TV show or whatever. Mm. It's like they make a joke and they're like to people watching the Olympics critiquing the people on their totally. on the couch chilling. It's like, really? They're putting themselves <laughs> out there and they made it to the Olympics. But I've caught myself and I'm like, just because you're ill or just because you feel this way, let's let's not push that on to other people because that's a you issue it's a you issue and that's something you have to fix yourself and the thing is it's funny because when i'm feeling more stress i'm more prone to doing things like that agreed i'm more prone to not be my like supreme self right like i feel like whenever i'm more really really stressed or when i'm having and i'm going through hard times i tend to back away from the internet because i know that i'm not in like the most amazing mental space because i'm going through shit Mm -hmm. um so i feel like it's really really important to kind of dissect that and know that for yourself and be like you know what maybe i shouldn't be on Twitter today. <laughs> because yeah, I agree. I like I I and I think whatever you're going through, you're you are responsible for. So you can't be like, well, I was just in a really heavy place at that time. That's why I treated everyone like trash and bullied the people around me. It's like, well, you know, that's not their fault. So you have to take accountability for why you're doing things and work on it. Like we're all human. We all make mistakes. Uh-huh. We all get mad. But I just think it's like a day by day process and everybody should just consider it and think about it and like why you're feeling the way you feel, why you're commenting the things you're commenting. How's things going at home? Mm-hmm. You know? Therapy is very real. Therapy's you know, real? therapy is real. It's, it's expensive. Gorgeous. It's expensive. <laughs> but when you, have, when you have insurance like that, yeah. obviously, like, you know, a lot of us have to have health insurance nowadays, but. I think it's important to kind of do Mm self-reflection and, you know, therapy is just a great version of that because it's like a mirror and you're kind of starting, you're starting to see yourself in certain ways. And, you know, I think that if you start, again, you find what you seek. um, And if you're looking for to become a better human being, you will be that. And also like if you can go to therapy or that's just not in your pathway or maybe you're too nervous to do that. I think it's also good to talk to someone, but not don't run to a person that's just going to be your yes man and agree with everything you're doing. Talk to someone who will set the record straight for you or someone that you really love their genuine advice. And just talking to people, I think, helps so much. I go to Manny about a lot of stuff that annoys me and it's just like a private conversation I want to have. And normally by the end of the conversation, I'm good. I, I Venting is so great. It's definitely real. It's like you have to unload that kind of energy um, in certain ways and hopefully you have someone that you can vent to and just get someone that like can see what you're talking about but also come from another angle because I think right. that's really, really, really important. I'll, same thing with Laura. I'll come to her about something and she'll tell me something and I'll be like, okay, I didn't think of it in that way. Maybe it wasn't meant like this. Da, da, da. And when you move forward because you start to see it, um, I think it's really important to just kind of find your tribe. Exactly. At the end of the day, you got to find your tribe. You got to find the people that fuck with you and you fuck with back. Yeah. Because I feel like if people just had less stress, less anxiety, we were genuinely more happy. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. I feel like maybe the reactions to things wouldn't be as aggressive sometimes. Totally. You know, and you, some I, things are called for outrage. I mean, uh, we yeah. got Britney Spears over here Baby, being owned it's by time. her father. It's like, time. The outrage needs for, to come out. This is a good movement. But there are times when it gets a little too aggressive. Right. Like for, you know, it just becomes too much. Basically, Like a Morphe receipt. <laughs> Like a damn receipt. You know, I think so, like, just just to even close out this segment, um, I just think it's important, so, yeah, of co- like, that we really stay on to the whole accountability culture, letting people move forward and grow. And I feel like we are two mm-hmm. people that have done that in our own way. Yeah. And I think that we are a testament that you people can grow and learn and change and be the most elite version of themselves if you give them a chance. So if you find in your heart, try to give people a chance. Exactly. Some people. <laughs> as much as you possibly Harvey can. Harvey Weinstein is not getting a chance from me. No. That's what no, I'm no. going to say. Exactly. Jamie Spears, you're not no getting chance. a chance. I agree. I hope you do grow and become a happy, better person. Mm-hmm. I just have no interest in being your friend. Because <laughs> you know he's like waiting to be my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's in your gyms constantly. Be like, oh my God, right, totally. let's hang out. Oh my God. <laughs> but you guys, with that, we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. And we'll be back with our last segment. Hey, so tight. stay tuned. And we 
are back with our final segment, which we are so excited about. So excited. I cannot freaking wait. So we went ahead and I asked on my Instagram stories, like, okay, guys, so give us a some secrets that you guys have if you guys don't mind sharing. And, of course, we're not going to be reading out anyone's names it's because anonymous. it's anonymous. And as we thought, it'd be kind of fun just kind of react to the the little secrets yeah. and just see what they have to say because honestly i've done this before and it's so fun i love it i love knowing information and doing nothing with it <laughs> <laughs> like we ain't gonna do shit we're just gonna react to it and maybe give advice if we have i don't freaking know <laughs> advice we shouldn't be giving Ex- exactly <laughs> but um i did screenshot one all right let's hear it i'm nervous not nervous i'm excited let's go okay so it is my husband and i have a secret girlfriend on the side oh and i'm by so she has a girlfriend? Yes, but he, they have a girlfriend together. So they're in a relationship and they have a girlfriend. One girlfriend that they yes. share. <laughs> yes. And they're not telling family and friends. I would, And they said, yeah, and it's and a people secret. They know. So they have a secret girlfriend on the side. Honestly, it's kinky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I, what I imagine it like is it's almost like a, what's it called? Like they're just not. But I guess would it be technically monogamous because it's like what is the word the- monogamous 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 <laughs> <laughs> monogamous monogamous is basically where it's like you and your partner only and there's no like sleeping around. I knew it's that just like already. You Thank you for you confirming. Knew that. Yeah, I did know that. that deep down, but I wanted to confirm before we jump deeper into monogamy. Monogamy. Yes. Wait, monogamy. Whoa. <laughs> monogamy. We there are, we go. Monogamy. This is why we shouldn't be. I graduated <laughs> college. <laughs> I dropped out. <laughs> And I still don't know him. Okay, monogamy. <laughs> okay, so everyone thinks they're a monogamist. 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 Mist. Monogamist <laughs> relationship. Sorry. <laughs> no, see, but, they, but so like, so they, so they're, everyone in their life thinks that they're just wife and husband. Love Turns it. out the wife is bi and the husband already likes women. So it's like, oh, we have a secret girlfriend on the side that comes in. Honestly, I like what they're doing if they're happy doing it. Uh, Listen, I believe that as a relationship, you make your own rules. Yes. And Period. it's like, why Why is that? I mean, it depends on how close you are with this girlfriend. Does she want to meet your families? Right. <laughs> or is she just hooking up? You know, right. I don't know. But if she doesn't want to meet your families, why do they need to know? I mean, they don't. They like, it's don't. literally, it's private. Friends, like, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's their own relationship. It's their own. The thing is, like, even, like, when I, if I ever have a boyfriend in my life, uh-huh. like, things that happen to me and my boyfriend are not things I'm going to be sharing with all my family. Like, it's us. It's exactly. our relationship. It's your own thing. Right. It does not, does not for now, everyone else. Now, if you're, else. like, living with your family and you're sneaking this you person know, in and out. There's that. A conversation <laughs> might be nice. <laughs> you know, if they're sneaking in through the window and might potentially stealing your grandma's earrings. Oh. You know, there's that. Yeah. So there's, that. there's there's areas where that can get hairy, but I do feel I personally not my lifestyle, but I will not judge others because it seems like they're happy and it's like honestly, it's just going to be a super hairy situation if you tell a bunch of people. I agree. I think that honestly as long as you're happy and you guys are open with communication and it's that's what the relationship is built on trust and a foundation, a really strong foundation. Mm-hmm. If the foundation is built on Stone, it's strong. If it's built on sand, baby, it's boom. Not. Wait, can we read one more? Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that Let's one was one really that fun. Was, I mean, by the a, way, that was fantastic. Thank you. I don't know who shared that, but thank you to who shared that. I love it. I love it. Let's see. Let's go shock find me with something because I, I can't see what he's looking at right now. So he's just gonna read it, and we're all gonna be surprised. Huh? Okay. You see, it looked really strange. It was. It was just a very confusing situation. Okay. So we have one. Okay. Okay. So she says, I have a boyfriend of more than three years. Okay. But I'm secretly fucking a married man because he's better in bed. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. See, this is where it starts to get hair. Do you know how I was talking about foundation and sand yep. and on stone? Um, This is not the way to go. <laughs> People are not going to like what I have to say, but to me, I do take the feelings and heart and time of the person who's been in this relationship for three years into yes. consideration as they should be taken into consideration. And ouch. Ouch. Oh, like, like It's like one of those, like, oh. a knife turn. Like, because when I even reading it, I was like, oh, shit. Okay. I do feel like this is a recipe for disaster. I think so, too. I think that, um, see, for me, this is my personal humble opinion. Mm-hmm. I just don't believe in cheating. Mm-hmm, me Never either. have. I believe that you should really, really be, be open. Like if you're not happy in a relationship, it's like if you're not happy with 
the sex life, then like one, let your partner know. Maybe things can change. Go to a sex therapist potentially. There's so many things you can do. Look up, watch porn. Maybe I don't know. Something. Do something. Toys. I don't know. Yeah. Role play. There's so much There's you can, can do. do to spice that up. So I just feel like agreed with you. I feel like cheating really isn't the answer there and I feel like it kind of gets selfish because you're putting this person on hold in this relationship with you and then you got this and so it's like you should let one go it's also like also the man's married also the man's the man is also married so then I have to take his wife into consideration Uh Uh and if there's a lot I have to I don't want to like someone to tell like a secret me be like you're a bad person I'm not trying to say that I'm just trying to say let's slow our roll and think about what we're doing here well it's anonymous so we're not over here calling out anyone specifically this is our personal opinion about situations that happen in real life it's not like cheating doesn't happen cheating happens all All the the fucking time time. this is just our personal opinion about whether you know cheating is for us or not I it's not for me or or Laura (laughs) (laughs) and anyway and I, I just for me I always just feel like they're has to be an answer for something. And if you're not happy in a relationship, it's okay to leave it. Yeah. And I know it's scary. Because the thing is, a lot of people don't want to leave a relationship because it's scary to leave. Because it's what they've known for so long. Mm-hmm. But you can't drag someone along. And like, two people along, actually, essentially, dragging two people along. Because it's just, it's a hard situation. Like, at right. hand, like, you can't just keep dragging them along because you want to have your cake and eat it too. Exactly. You know? So that's and like I my And I feel like it's just gonna, it's like, I don't want to be like, oh, karma. But... It, these situations do tend to boil a poopy situation Absolutely. for later on. They do. They Not just poopy. <laughs> just Not a massive poopy. dump could land on your doorstep. You just one never know. Day. Yeah. You so just it's never just like, know. I know it seems like the happy choice now, but eventually shit will hit thy fan. You know, it's you got you got to think of your mind, not just what your body wants, but what your mind needs, and, and your that's heart. hard to do. It's hard, I would be especially really when hard. it's demon time. Yeah, oh. baby, it's hard. <laughs> I would Literally. be really distraught leaving a relationship after three years. It's a long time. It's so a long. long time, and I agree. It's like scary. So, like, I feel you, boo. I feel, feel we, you. Honestly, we feel you wholeheartedly. But you gotta. Make I don't, a I'm not against you, but I want you to do better. Hundred percent. That's all. That's all. All peace and love here. <laughs> all peace and love constantly. Well, that is it for <laughs> our first episode, guys. Whether you're watching on IGTV, our YouTube channel, full coverage, be sure and check it out if you haven't yet, so yes. you can see us in Apple, person. Apple, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all, all the places. Be sure to like, review, and give us a follow. And be sure and tell all your friends about it, your dog about it, your grandma about it, your cat about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everyone that you know needs to know about full coverage. And write a review, guys. If you guys can, go to the Apple uh, podcast section. Write a little review. We would love to read some of you guys' comments on the podcast in the future. Yes. That would be fantastic. Because, you know, obviously, this is our first episode. We would love to see and hear what you guys have to say about it. We're really, really curious. We're very open to feedback, too. Yes. So we're really, we're just excited to start this new adventure with you guys. We are. Thank you guys for being here. We love you so much. We'll catch you in our next episode. Bye, you guys. See you next week. Mwah.